Nine years ago last month, I started a YouTube channel, this YouTube channel called Budget Girl, because I had $33,000 in student loan debt and I was making around $25,000 a year as a newspaper reporter. Essentially, I was in big financial trouble, had no skills around money, had never really learned, and was absolutely determined to pull myself out of that situation. Three years and three months after that, I was making all of $30,000 a year, but I had paid off all of that debt. It has been six years since I became debt free, and I wanna talk about how my life has changed and what hasn't changed. And yes, it's odd that my channel, which started cataloging my journey out of debt, I've now been out of debt double the amount of time as I was in it on this channel. So a lot of things have changed and some things haven't. Let's get into it. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want to learn to live a life without debt and the life of your dreams on less. So the absolute biggest thing that has changed since I paid off all of my debt is my general level of stress. I cannot tell you how much I was just constantly worried about money when I was in debt. And this was student loan debt. It was something that I thought I needed in order to earn my education. And it wasn't a ton of consumer debt or anything, but it weighed heavy and that monthly bill for my student loans was a huge burden, especially when I was making $1,600 a month and I owed almost $300 a month on my student loans. I think possibly more, it's been so long I've kind of forgotten. But owing that much every single month made it so that when I lost a job and started this financial journey, that was one of my biggest worries, not even how I could keep a roof over my head, food on my table, but can I, pay on the loans like it was this giant burden on my shoulders and not having that just frees up the entirety of my income which now is admittedly a lot more than it was then but I've never been a high earner I currently make about fifty thousand dollars here at Texas A&M and I have a couple of side gigs and multiple income streams but I've never been in a place where I could just not really worry about money now it's to the level where inflation doesn't hit me so much it's not a constant daily worry and I don't have to worry about the tiny little things. I know that if I get a nail in my tire, I can just pay for it. If I get a medical bill, I'll be fine. If I lose my job even, I have options because I have savings now. When back when I was in debt, I had no savings. I had no plan to fall back on or people to fall back on. So there was just kind of like a constant Kind of like you're swimming with your head just above water of being scared of dipping below the water. And I just lived my life that way for three years, terrified. So not having to worry about the little expenses and just overall less worry about like my full financial life is a huge upgrade just for my mental health. The next thing that has changed is having savings. Back when I was paying off my debt, I did the whole Dave Ramsey thing. I only had about a thousand to two thousand dollars and it was scary and I had several things in my life like my car that could go at any minute so I was kind of constantly teetering on the edge. Now I recently had to replace the AC system at my house that was eight thousand dollars and I just paid it. I've purchased a new to me car with just cash. I have savings that will cover my roof if it needs to go out or a sudden medical emergency. I have enough to float me if I were to be laid off and once again, that makes your life just so much better when you're not constantly having to worry about when something bad is gonna happen or shoe's gonna drop. Having savings is a game changer and a credit card is not emergency savings, it's different. The way that I save has also changed. A very common thing that people in the personal finance space tell you to do is to automate your savings and investments so that you don't have to remember to do that every month. But a lot of them forget that if you don't have that much to begin with, automating those can cause extra stress because if something happens, you might not have the leeway in your accounts. So throughout the entirety of my debt payoff journey, I was manually moving things to savings at the end of every month if I had sinking funds for something. And now everything is automated. I automate savings, I automate my investments, and it just goes out of my account and I don't even notice it because I have those margins now. Speaking of investing, the next thing that has changed is that I now have the opportunity to grow my wealth. So I was able to take the money that I used to send at my student loans every month 
and start putting that towards maxing out my Roth IRA every month, investing now every month. I bought a duplex after many, many months of savings, which is an asset that now makes me money. And it's very much the, when you don't have debt dragging you down, you can then funnel what money you have access to if you're smart with it into things that will make you more money. And it's been absolutely amazing seeing my investments grow over the past six years. My duplex has is something that brings me in money every single month. My investments pay me dividends every month and my overall net worth just continues to grow. It's kind of that rich people secret of having money makes you money. Whereas before I didn't have anything extra to send out to anything else that could possibly grow. I'm also able to take more chances and kind of take advantage of opportunities that might present themselves as ways to make more money. So I was able to invest in the ag wagon, the camper that I use as an Airbnb. And even though it netted me negative money the first year, I was still able to cash flow that entire thing. I was able to take that chance financially and know that I would be okay. And I also even knew that if it didn't make money or net a profit in the first year or two, I would be fine. It wouldn't be disastrous. Same thing with the duplex. I bought that at the very beginning of the pandemic when everyone was telling you not to buy. And because I had enough savings in the bank, I knew that I would be okay if something happened like the tenant decided not to pay rent or trash the place or something like that. I essentially had the leeway, enough money coming in without any other real bills coming out or any debts drawing against my income to be able to weather a deal that might not have been perfect or whether an investment that wasn't a sure thing and no investment is truly a sure thing. I wouldn't have been able to take that type of chance when I was still in debt because what if it went bad, I couldn't pay the debt and all of a sudden everything would come crashing down. I was so close to the line back when I was paying off debt. It was scary. The next thing that has changed is that I now have a little bit of spare money where I can do passion projects and not everything that I do has to be revolved around saving or making money, which was essentially what I made my hobby for three years. If you watch my videos back then, every single thing I did was about making more money or saving money on things. And it worked, <laughs> I gamified it, but now I can actually relax a little bit and I can do things that I find really fun. So for instance, I've made a couple of little free libraries for my community, which have been very personally rewarding to me as a lifelong reader. I certified my dog Stella as a therapy dog and now we do regular volunteering at hospitals and nursing homes and the college and the library. And that is very rewarding. And I really love being able to do those things that might cost me a little bit of money, not much, but essentially I have the time because I have that financial security that I can then go do those things. I can also play with financial projects like my cost per wear spreadsheet that would have been ridiculous to do before. I'm very interested in money experiments like figuring out what my true cost per wear is or value is for the things that I bring into my life like clothing. That's not the type of thing that I could have put that many resources into because I needed to be using it to make that time and energy to make or save money previously. I also get to shop for fun now, which, you know, is not a hobby you want to make a huge amount of time and money dependent on, but I love thrifting. <laughs> it uh, brings me a lot of joy to go thrifting. And I love that if I find something that I love now, I can just purchase it. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. And I don't have to have a big conversation in my head of, oh, should I, should I not? Does this, would this money be better spent going somewhere else? No, I have a budget that I can use to essentially enrich my life. And I don't necessarily have to think about most things if I decide I really, really want them. The next thing that has changed is that I use credit cards now. When I was paying off debt, I did not want to deal with any of that. I never really had issues with credit cards except one Walmart one in, high, in college that uh, I immediately ran up and then took many months to pay off. But the fact that you're distancing yourself from your purchases for an entire month, you don't necessarily know what's gonna happen over that month until you can go pay it off. What if something happens and suddenly you have to keep a balance? So I waited until I was debt free to start using a credit card. And now I use credit cards for all of my expenses and I utilize them for the points and the rewards. And I have a few that I cycle between and it's really nice to get those benefits back. The trick of course with credit cards is that you have to pay them off in full and on time every single month. And I have mindset to auto pay every single month. And I actually still treat my budget the way that I put in my purchases, like I'm using debit. So essentially I count all of those purchases the month that I make them and I act 
like all of that money is already gone from my account. And then when the credit card comes in and scoops out that payment a month later, I already counted it against it. It's gone. I actually ended up even doing this for bigger purchases to utilize the rewards. So for the recent AC replacement that I mentioned, I put that on a credit card for a month. I had the money in savings, but the person who did the repairs, the contractor, allowed you to pay with credit card with no extra fee to you. He had to pay a fee and then he asked me not to pay with credit cards after that, but <laughs> he admitted that was on him. I didn't know you had to pay a fee, neither did he. So I didn't have to pay a fee for it. So by putting that $8,000 purchase on that credit card, I got over $160 back. That's just money saved. And that's not, doesn't seem like a lot, but when you put all of your purchases pretty much on a card, it adds up over time and you can utilize those. Once again, do not do this if you're not in a good enough financial place to be able to weather that month to month. But for me, I've now been doing it for like five years. It works really well and I've never paid a cent in interest. The next thing that's changed is I have some bougie little dogs now. I have two little toy Aussies that between Jacob and I, we spent over $2,000 on. And uh, that would not have been a feasible thing previously in my life or when I had debt. Rory was 50 bucks at the pound <laughs> and she was a mutt. So she's never fortunately had any major health issues. Both of the Aussies have and have cost thousands of dollars after that on various things, but we love them and I can afford them. And I'm very grateful to be able to spend that money and they enrich my life so much. I love those little stinkers. But yeah, Sarah who had debt would never have bought a dog for over a thousand dollars. And the final thing that's changed is that I now outsource some things. So you can see across my entire channel, I try to DIY things as much as humanly possible. If I have the capacity to do it myself, I'm going to do it myself. But recently I was uh, renovating Jacob's bathroom in the duplex and uh, one of the faucets had broken. Honestly, the entire, the, the tub is original to the house, over 20 years old. It's gross, it needed to be ripped out and replaced. I found a contractor that would do the entire bathroom for a really good deal. And I went ahead and said, yeah, go for it. Because I could have gone in and painted and maybe even done the tile work and done stuff like that, but it wasn't that much more money just to get them to do it start to finish. And I decided that my time and several of my weekends and days were worth, it was worth it to me to save those, keep them for myself and just outsource that cost. Old Sarah never would have done this. Though current Sarah is redoing the closet this weekend, not looking forward to it, but it's just like rip out the old shelving, paint the whole thing, put in new shelving. It'll be fine. I am capable of this. I will just be tired after. I'm not gonna outsource that, but the plumbing I'll outsource anytime. That was a lot of hard labor. A bath, like having to rip out the whole tub and shower. Nope, nope. Very glad I didn't sign up for that. I'm also considering buying a brand new dryer like from the store where they deliver it, which is, I'm still like kind of buffing against a little bit because I see dryers on like Facebook Marketplace for like 150, 200 bucks. And I'm like, I know that I can fit that in my hatchback. It's a newer dryer than the one that I have that currently takes a couple of cycles to get things dry. And yes, I've had the vents blown out, but the convenience of just ordering a brand new one with a warranty from Home Depot or Lowe's for like $800, I'm starting to waffle on a little bit. That's the line right there is like around $500 or so. I'm getting better at outsourcing things, but I'm still cheap. I don't know, tell me whether you would get like a brand new dryer installed or if you'd go the secondhand route. And normally secondhand's fine. I put a nearly new washer and dryer in my renter unit back when I bought the place. She hasn't had an issue with them, a couple of years old. People post things for on Facebook Marketplace all the time that are only a couple of years old, they work fine. You know, people get married, they move, and they ended up with like two sets of washers and dryers. I see it all the time. It's just a matter of going to get the thing, loading it up, and then having to do all of that. Also, I sold my dolly to the repairman that did the bathroom because it was like a really nice furniture dolly I'd found for like 20 bucks. And he was like, I'll take 80 bucks off your bill. And I was like, sold, <laughs> I will find another dolly. <laughs> and now I don't have one. Still worth it, still worth it. Also still cheap. Speaking of which, here are some things that haven't changed since I became debt-free. One, I still shop around for the best deal. Every single time 
Just because I have access to more money now doesn't mean that I'm going to waste it. Number two, I still budget and I still use the same spreadsheet budget that I was using when I was getting out of debt. You can actually get it on my Etsy shop. I now also track my net worth on a similar spreadsheet that you can use in tandem. And those are like my budgeting secrets. I can see everything, I can plan everything. They're zero based budgets. So you know exactly how much is left at the end of the month. And yeah, people love them. You can go check them out. I'm still really frugal. I still mainly shop at Aldi. I drive a salvage car that I paid cash for. I don't think I'll ever have a car payment. That type of debt just doesn't seem like fun to me. And essentially I haven't let my lifestyle inflate too much. Whenever I paid off the debt, I immediately rolled that money that I was paying to debt into my savings to build up an emergency fund. Once I had those emergency funds in place, I started rolling that and any extra money that I ended up with to investing, to saving for a house. And now I'm still operating on much less than I have. And I haven't allowed everything to kind of bump up to the level where I still feel like I don't have any money left at the end of the month. I feel like I have plenty of money left at the end of the month. I have increased my grocery and entertaining and those types of budgets incrementally and as needed, but I've kept the habit of putting the savings and the investing first and prioritizing those things. A lot of people, once they pay off their debt, they went so hard that they kind of loop back around and they're like, we're debt free, we can do all the things that we wanna do. And they end up using debt to do it. And that traps you in an endless cycle of not living within what you have. During the past nine years, I've also increased my income by getting new jobs, adding in streams of income. I don't think I'll ever have only one stream of income again because it just makes me feel unsafe. Paying off debt was really, really hard. I look back on that with pride in myself that I managed to do it. And I actually might've gone too hard making it like my entire personality. I'm letting other things in now, <laughs> but and I do believe that you can enjoy life while paying off debt. It's a balance that you have to find for yourself and with your money priorities. But I'm so glad that I paid off that debt. It's, it's been over 10 years since I graduated college and most people generally are expected to pay off their student loans in 10 to 15 years. Whereas I went hard and did it in the three. So for the past six years, I've been able to use the money that I would have been paying on that to build a life to build wealth in other ways. If you still have debt, I would love to know what some of the things are that you think will change or remain the same once you're debt free, if you're working on that. And personally, I'm really happy with how my life has changed since debt. And I only think it's gonna get better. If you're under a lot of money stress, I just want you to know that a lot of people, including myself, have been there and you are working really hard and doing a really great job. Anytime you're fighting for the future version of yourself, and for better things for you and your family, you deserve to be proud of yourself. The road is not always easy and it's not always short, but you can absolutely do it. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time with love, stay frugal, keep on going. A budgeted life is better spent. <music>